Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to an info session which is being done jointly by NMIMS University and Purdue University. Uh, today's uh, info session will be done by colleagues from NMIMS and our distinguished speakers from Purdue uh, University, the Cranard School of Business. Um, I'm just going to call out their names and each one of them will do their own introductions. So I am Meena Saxena and I'm the Director for International Linkages at NMI this University. Uh, and I'm just going to do a brief introduction for you. Uh, thereafter, we'll have Professor Binesh Nair, who's the chairperson for the MBA, Decision Science Program at NMIMS. And thereafter, we'll have the team from Purdue talking about, uh, you know, the Purdue experience. We have uh, Greg Beaver, who's the executive director for the various programs, the MBA, the professional masters, and the PhD programs at Kent Cranert. Um, unfortunately, Dr. Wong, who's the co-academic director of the BAME program, uh, will not be able uh, to be uh, talking to you or meeting you this morning, uh, this evening, but uh, I think Mary will more than make up for, you know, what uh, uh, Dr. Wong would have shared about the program. And then Mary uh, Mitchell, who's the assistant director of the BAME program, will take you through the extracurricular activities. Uh, we also have Trisha Jean from uh, Purdue, who's there to assist both Greg and uh, uh, Mary. Uh, so before uh, Professor Binesh, can we have the first slide? And as Professor Binesh uh, has the slide on the screen, uh, let me tell you that today's presentation is extremely detailed. You'll just have to be a little patient because it will give you a complete overview of the NMIMS program. It'll give you a complete overview of the Purdue program. It'll tell you all about the internships, all about the extracurricular activities, all about the plans, the admission process, the fees. Everything is covered in this presentation. So just be a little patient. I think between the four of us, we shouldn't take more than 40 minutes. And thereafter, you will have some time for your Q&A. And you can post your questions in the chat box. Uh, so with that, let me start the, the presentation. So as you know, today's info session is on the dual degree program being offered by two leading universities, Purdue and NMIMS. And this is a MBA program in decision science and analytics. Next slide, please. Uh, to give you a little background about NMIMS, I'm sure most of you know about it, but all the same, just a brief overview. So NMIMS, as you know, the university is a category one university. We have a, a legacy of 40 years. We have eight campuses across the country, 17 different schools, and uh, you know, uh, more than 17,000 students. Next slide, please. Uh, the School of Business Management. So the program that we're talking today is offered by NMIMS University School, which is the School of Business Management. And this is the school with a legacy of 40 years. It is ranked consistently in the top 10 private and public universities and in the top five private universities of uh, private business schools of India as far as the MBA programs are concerned. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, the programs, um, you know, there's many times a confusion about the analytics programs, the various analytics programs that we offer. So I'm going to take you through some of the program offerings of the, uh, in, uh, at, at the NMIMS University. So at the Mumbai campus, we have the School of Business Management, which offers the MBA, it offers the MBA HR, and it offers the MBA Decision Science and Analytics. And this is the program that we are presenting to you today. They also offer an MBA in Pharmaceutical Management. Apart from that, we at the Mumbai campus, we also have the Center of Excellence in Analytics and Data Science, which offers uh, uh, an MBA in Business Analytics and Digital Transformation. But the one that we're talking about is the one offered by the School of Business Management, which is ACSB accredited, which is in the top five private schools of India. Next slide, please. Apart from that, we also have MBA program offered at other NMIMS campuses, which is the Bangalore campus, Hyderabad campus, Navi Mumbai, and Indore. And you will see business analytics is also offered at our Hyderabad campus, and that's offered by the business school at Hyderabad. 
Next slide, please. Uh, so the program that we're talking about is very unique. The first of its kind in India. And because it's a dual degree, you're doing a MBA, which is a two-year MBA program, of which you will do some part of the program in India at NMIMS, and you will do about seven months of the program at Purdue. And you will get degrees from both universities. So you'll get an MBA in Decision Science and Analytics from NMIMS, and you will get an MS in, in BAME, which is Business Analytics and Information Management from Cranard School of Business. And that's why dual degrees, because you're going to get a degree from both universities. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can see, both schools, the Cranard School and the NMIMS School of Business Management are both ACSP accredited. You already know of the rankings of the School of Business Management. Purdue, I'm sure you're all aware of. I don't need to tell you, but I will repeat for the benefit of some. It's in ranked in the top 100 universities of the world, in the top 50 universities of the US. And more than anything else, their analytics program is ranked top notch in America. It's been ranked the number one analytics program in the US. So what we're talking about is a, a, a dual degree program offered by two leading schools and, and each one brings their strengths to the table. Next slide, please. Uh, you can click a picture of this slide. It tells you details, you know, you know, in case you want more details, where you would get the details, if you want to apply for this program, what's the link on which you can apply. All those details are available here. Also note, with regard to your application, what's the process? So before you take your NMAT by GMAT exam, you are required to apply to NMIMS for this particular program. Otherwise, please click a picture of the screen and you will have all the details with you. Next slide, please. Uh, over to my colleague now, Professor Binesh Nair, who is the chairperson for the program, who will take you through all the details of what you're going to be doing at NMIMS in this period of 15 months. So out of the 24 months, you're going to be doing roughly about 16 months, 17 months at NMIMS. And, and uh, Professor Binesh will take you through those details. So over to you, Professor Binesh. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Meena, uh, for that. Um, and uh, yeah, excited to be here, uh, you know, to share uh, the information about, uh, uh, you know, this niche uh, master's program uh, in uh, decision science and analytics. And uh, to, to be very honest, uh, you know, I can say that it's it's one of its kind, as Meena rightly pointed out. And I'd say there is no other uh, university in India which is offering a dual degree in analytics and uh, so that's basically it. But more importantly, what I'm going to do in the next two slides is, uh, you know, uh, try to convey what exactly is the USP of this uh, program, right? So uh, there are a lot many degrees out there in analytics. It's obviously something which is hot selling the market at the moment, uh, mainly driven by the requirement from the industry. Uh, but one of the key gaps that remains in the industry, uh, 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 like I've been with Deloitte, are coming from the industry that way. And what, what, what you know, in the industry, the requirement is typically at the moment, uh, which, which definitely we get this feedback also, is that we don't have enough people who can bridge the gap between the business users and the data team, right? So you have people with kind of technical skills, uh, but who, you know, who learn some uh, courses out there online, do some Python courses, do some Tableau, uh, become a so-called data scientist. But what they miss is basically the business aspects of it. And then you have business users who have kind of a shallow understanding of many of these technologies, but then uh, really does not understand from a use case perspective, which is a big gap because, uh, you know, it's very difficult to, for a company to transition to a data-driven organization if you don't get that right. And that's exactly the gap which we are trying to uh, you know, fix. Uh, so as part of this program, uh, right, uh, the MS BAME and, and the MBA DSA program, what we do, especially at SBM, is that uh, you know, we, we, we ensure that you're, you, you have a solid understanding of business, you have a solid understanding of stats and analytics. And this will then be complemented by uh, you know, the, the, the curriculum at uh, the Purdue, right? So, in the end, you will have a graduate which understand the business aspect uh, of, uh, of an organization, uh, right? And plus, how do you apply analytics to many of these problems? Uh, so that's what makes this program in that way unique. So you learn a mix of both. You learn business and plus, uh, you know, you, you learn data science as well. 
Uh, now, taking that point further, so the program comes with a lot of key features. Uh, so I may, in the interest of time, I may focus on some of the key ones, which I believe makes this uh, program uh, pretty much unique and might be difficult to mimic. Uh, is, is one is obviously the cross-cultural collaboration. Right, so this is basically, I'm sure my colleagues from uh, uh, you know, uh, Purdue University will be able to uh, throw more light on this, but I'll just have a brief mention of this. Uh, so uh, one of the thing is obviously in an industry is that most of your uh, <clears throat> working uh, environment will be you know, uh, having to collaborate with people who are coming from diverse walks of life, bringing in different perspectives. And some of these things are very difficult to mimic inside a classroom. And this is, done uh, through various projects, for instance, at Purdue, wherein you have an opportunity to work in uh, multicultural uh, teams, typically working on consulting assignments coming from the industry. Uh, and the feedback that we have been receiving from the students who have been there is that it has been a life-changing experience. So I think, I think this is one key aspect of this program uh, to a larger degree. Uh, the second key aspect is that, uh, or, or feature of this program is that uh, it's not just about learning few courses as part of this program, but it is also about how do you apply what I have learned in the classroom to real world problems. And this is where we have a few of those key components which we have uh, uh, you know, put inside that program. Uh, one is a compulsory 12 week uh, internship uh, that is typically driven by the industry. Uh, so here you have an opportunity to work, uh, you know, with an organization on their pressing problem and see how analytics or data per se can be used to solve that problem. Uh, now, what you achieve when you do this is that your transition to the, uh, to the job market becomes more smooth because you know what it takes, the key skills required, and if you have any gaps, you are able to fix it. Uh, that's number one. And then we also have capstone project where we were, uh, you know, wherein we give you the opportunity to either work, you know, maybe an industry project if you have one, or this can also be a research project, which may be driven by the faculty, or maybe you can pick up some problem, which is kind of close to you, again, giving an opportunity to work on some real world problems. Uh, one last thing, obviously, I'll work, uh, you know, before I move on is that uh, what makes this different than many of the other programs, which may which you may think that why not do an MBA in business analytics from COE, for instance, might be a natural question for you. Now, where this program again makes the difference is the, the, the faculty who are doing this course offering. So anybody can you know, have this kind of a curriculum, right? But what makes the difference is who delivers that, uh, you know, those courses. So here, most of these courses, I mean, almost all at SBM is, uh, is <clears throat> driven by faculty from the School of Business Management. Uh, so they're obviously uh, people who are from the industry, uh, people who are uh, doing cutting edge, uh, you know, in, in their research and analytics uh, and same applies for uh, obviously for you as well. So you learn from the best brains in the industry or, or from academia. Uh, so these are the are key aspects and you know the managerial part technical I already kind of covered. This is how a typical learning curve looks like. We'll talk more about this. So you start with some basic course on statistics. You have some foundational course. You, you keep building those, uh, you know, have those fundamental blocks. And uh, finally, you culminate by doing an internship, which in fact is the last part of this uh, program. Uh, now, this is how the typical timeline looks like. Uh, so uh, like uh, uh, you, you will be joining somewhere around June 2022 and typically it takes around 22 months where as Mina pointed out so you complete three trimesters and the bridge term at NMIMS uh, followed by two trimester typically seven approximately six to seven months at Purdue and then we'll be back in India to do an internship and then uh, you are kind of uh, available for the placement uh, so this, this is typically how the program timeline looks like. Now this, this this slide might be uh, you know something which is of interest for uh, you know uh, for many of you who want to know what, what what's exactly covered as part of this program and you can see the breadth of it right uh, so you uh, so we have courses from every area and that's something which I said as part of the first slide uh, that the idea of this program is to give you a, a kind of a good understanding uh, of business and that would mean that uh, uh, having an understanding of how HR functions uh, finance uh, marketing strategy operations and so on. Uh, we also have a good focus on communication because most of, one of the key aspects that many of you will be, you know, or, or the graduates of this program would be 
expected is uh, being able to communicate the insights in, a, in an appropriate manner. And that's, that's the reason why we have a strong focus on communication as well. Uh, and obviously you have those key courses on analytics. Most of these are hands-on, uh, right? Uh, so which mean that that's, that, that's where the technical aspect uh, comes in, uh, right? Uh, so you see that, so the, and then one last thing, uh, you know, before I move on uh, is, uh, you know, if you see there are also courses within every bucket, which is underlying. Now these are uh, courses which are typically techno functional. Uh, so you, for instance, HR analytics, you already have some fundamentals on HR. Then HR analytics is basically a course where you apply your understanding of HR and analytics to solve some problems, which is HR demand. These are electives typically. So based on your interest, you might cherry pick, right? Uh, so that's, that's typically how the curriculum looks like. Uh, this is the curriculum at Purdue. I think I'll leave uh, uh, maybe the colleagues from Purdue to uh, throw more light on this, but this this, this how it looks like. So it's, it's more technical uh, compared to what we offer at SBM because we offer an MBA, they offer an MS. So that, that's the difference that you see there. Uh, experiential learning, as I mentioned, is one of the key aspects of this course, right? And as I mentioned already that you have an in uh, internship, which is industry driven. You have a capstone project, which is again, real life projects. It, it can be faculty mentored at the same time. And then at Purdue, you have consulting projects. Typically, you know, uh, you have these uh, projects coming from the industry where you have an opportunity, as I mentioned, uh, you know, to work in diverse team atmosphere and get those kind of skill sets, which, which definitely can be very helpful moving ahead. Uh, I think yeah that that's uh, uh, as far as uh, you know what what we offer at uh, you know as part of the MBA DSA experience I believe uh, the Purdue uh, my Purdue colleagues can take over from uh, from here. Uh, before uh, Greg takes over, uh, let me just let you know that the next part of the presentation will focus on the experience at Purdue. And once our colleagues from Purdue have spoken, we will come back and explain to you the admission process and take you through the internship and placement opportunities in India. So now over to uh, Greg Beaver. Thank you, Mina, and good uh, evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak to you about what's going on here at Purdue and this joint uh, agreement that we have with NMIMS. Uh, we're very excited about this, uh, and this is actually um, the fourth year now, I believe, that we're uh, entering into this. So um, we've seen great results and, and very excited about the students that have come through the NMIS MBA program. Next slide, please. So. Um, we'll go ahead and skip through this slide and jump right into it. Unfortunately, Dr. Uh, Yang Wang is unable to attend this morning. We thought she was going to be here, uh, but I'll talk about her for just a second. If you, you go back, Trish, please. Um, she's one of our clinical assistant professors, and she is our um, co-director of the program, along with Dr. Uh, Matthew Lanham. I'm gonna pause for just a minute for the screens to catch up. Next next slide, please. Okay, Thank okay. you. Sorry, it was, I couldn't oh. see where the, the move forward and back buttons were like hidden on my screen for a moment. Apologize for that. Thank you, we're, we're good now. Um, so as I mentioned, Dr. Wang uh, has been with us uh, for quite some time now. Uh, she's actually won Distinguished Teaching Awards on behalf of her, I do apologize that she couldn't uh, be here today. Um, she is uh, actually um, going to be with us at future sessions. So if uh, in the future there's some additional, we'll make sure to include those so you can ask her any questions. Our other co-director, uh, which isn't here today, he usually does in this, is Dr. Matthew Lamb. Dr. Lamb has been around since the inception of the program. Uh, as uh, one of the uh, directors or academic directors of the program. And um, he is, um, sorry about that, my, my computer just froze. Uh, I do apologize for all the technical problems that we're having. Uh, he is very, very involved in the program uh, so if you do decide to uh, go into the program, 
uh, you'll you'll have the opportunity to work very closely with both Dr. Young and Dr. Lanham uh, during your time here. Next slide, please. Uh, on staff today, uh, as mentioned, I, I'm Greg B. I'm the executive director of the master's and uh, doctoral programs here at the Cranach School of Management. Uh, you'll also have an opportunity, uh, and Mary Mitchell will be presenting. She's our assistant director uh, of the academic program specifically for business analytics and information management. Uh, and Trish Hartman uh, is also on the call, uh, and she will be moving into the role of assistant director of academic programs for the Bain program by the time you get here. So I wanted to introduce uh, her as well. Next slide, please. So a lot of people often ask, uh, where exactly is Purdue? So I'm gonna give a little bit of an overview about Purdue University, uh, our location, some of the, the interesting points about Purdue that uh, I thought you might be of interest, and then we'll get into the specifics of the program. So Purdue University is actually physically located in the state of Indiana which is considered the Midwest portion of the United States of America. Next slide. Um, some interesting information, the population of uh, West Lafayette and Lafayette, and Purdue is actually in the, the city of West Lafayette, but beyond the fact that there's a river dividing the two cities, you probably wouldn't know the difference between you're in, when you're in Lafayette and West Lafayette. Collectively, the population is about 160,000 people. And then uh, we also have all of our uh, students who aren't counted in those um, numbers, and we'll talk about those in just a moment. Lafayette has everything that you would need. Um, it's a nice uh, sized town, but not overly populated. So there, we don't have the traffic problems uh, that many big cities are plagued with. Uh, we don't have the crime problems that many big cities around the world are plagued with either. It's a very quaint, what I would consider college town. Uh, by travel, it's only 60 miles to Indianapolis, which is the, the state capital and also the largest city uh, in the state. And it's about 120 miles or about two and a half hours by automobile to the city of Chicago, which is one of the largest cities in the United States. Uh, travel to different parts from Mumbai, it's about 8,000 miles. Uh, a lot of our students do try to take advantage when they first arrive or at the end of the program or during some of the breaks to go to some of the other major cities by uh, airplane. New York's about an hour and a quarter, Los Angeles about three and a half, Seattle about three and a half, uh, and Miami, which is always nice during the winter months, is about 2.3 hours uh, by, by airplane. So Purdue University itself, uh, we celebrated our 150th anniversary just a few years ago. And this is actually a picture of the university back in 1869. It originally started out as an engineering and agricultural school, and it's evolved into so much more, as you'll see on the next slide. So currently, um, our enrollment, the last two years, we've actually set a record enrollments. I apologize, I thought I had the newest data on here, uh, but we're just north of, I believe, 53,000 uh, at this point. Predominantly undergraduate makes up about uh, 75% um, and our graduate programs make up about 25 to 30% uh, year over year. This is a aerial picture of the university as it is today. So as you can see from the original picture back in 1869, it's really changed quite a bit. We have over 200 undergraduate majors and over 80 graduate programs. Here's a list of the different uh, colleges or schools within the university uh, and when they were founded. Now pause just for a second here so you can check those out um, and then we'll jump to the next. So thank you, Trish. Um, diversity at Purdue, uh, we're very proud of our diversity. We're typically rated as the second or the third by enrollment numbers of international population of all universities in the United States. And we're proud of that from the standpoint that one, we feel that we're being um, good educators and truly educating the world. But more importantly, we create an environment in where students can learn from each other, not only um, from experiences that they've had in many different uh, fields, uh, because most of our students that come into our professional master's or MBA program have had some work experience, um, but also from the standpoint that you get to work with people from different cultures 
and understand maybe how they think, different uh, cultural themes, different laws, and that creates an environment in which we can learn from each other in a safe environment. Um, usually, oh, back one, one page, please. Usually in any given year, we have at least 130 different countries represented um, at Purdue. Usually within our graduate programs, we're somewhere between 28 and I think 39 uh, a couple of years ago prior to COVID. Uh, students from 39 different countries from around the world. Uh, we do have a large influence from Central and Eastern Asia, uh, but we also have students from Europe, Latin America, the Middle East, literally from all over the place. Um, we also do have study abroad opportunities uh, for students that we present in 60 different countries. Probably not the best fit um, since you'll be here only seven months and you're actually studying abroad during your period but it uh, demonstrates our commitment um, to exposing students to uh, global experiences. Next slide, please. One of the other things that we're extremely uh, proud about uh, is the innovation at Purdue. Uh, we have the largest university affiliated incubation park in the United States. Companies, uh, top name companies have offices set up literally around Purdue and they continue to, uh, to join us uh, because of the neat things that are happening. Uh, we rank fourth in the nation among public universities in the Wall Street Journal as it relates to innovation. And interestingly, um, although we have multiple campuses just on our main campus in West Lafayette, Indiana, uh, the amount of intellectual property and startup companies that have been generated um, rivals those of all of the University of California campuses combined and the University of Texas campuses combined, who generally are one and two, and uh, we rank three, only a couple companies behind. Um, last year, Purdue generated 131 licensing deals, uh, 178 US and global patents, 25 startup companies of which that's a factor of uh, just over four of the other big 10 schools within the United States. And in 2014, uh, we had over 500 technologies licensed, uh, 460 patents issued, and 76 startup companies launched. So if you're interested in entrepreneurship, um, there are resources across the campus that are available to all of our students. You can sit in and watch um, how uh, the university, uh, staff, faculty, uh, as well as investors work uh, through what we call the foundry, which has open houses on Friday. So there's a lot of neat things um, that are very unique to our, our campus that you won't find at other universities that will all be available to you as a student of Purdue. Next slide, please. Interestingly, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Cranert and its origins, um, because actually Cranert started in 1962 through a very generous donation from Herman Cranert, who was a philanthropist during the Industrial Revolution. Um, but we actually started in the College of Engineering. Um, there were business classes being offered there, and ultimately uh, we spun off uh, Cranert due to the endowment and the gift money that was given by the Cranert family. Uh, these are actual uh, photos of the buildings, uh, two of the buildings at Craner. The one on the left is known as Rawls Halls, and it was erected in 2003, and that's where all your studies will be conducted. Um, the remainder of uh, the buildings within Craner generally house our undergraduate populations, um, and we have about 2,500 undergraduate students um, at Craner and about 500 graduate students between our master's and doctoral programs. Uh, the building on the left, Rouse Hall, is state of the art, although it was built in 2003, which seems like a long time ago now. It's continually being updated. Um, so the environment in which we've created is one of a collaborative area, uh, study rooms that are exclusive only to our graduate students. So it makes for a very nice learning environment for folks that are coming uh, to the Craner School of Management. Next slide, please. And uh, within Rawls, we have 13 uh, classrooms, 25 breakout rooms, and the Cranet Professional Development Centers, you'll often see on our websites abbreviated as KPDC. KPDC helps our students with uh, resume writing, uh, elevator pitches, 
uh, and preparing for employment uh, once they're graduates of the uh, university. And I think that covers uh, roles. We've kind of talked about the rest and I want to be mindful of time. So we'll go ahead and go to the next slide, which uh, I'll ask Mary to uh, open her mic and she'll cover the next few slides for us. Okay, good morning. Am, am I audible? Good. Um, well, just an overview of the bank program. Uh, we began residentially in 2016. The full-time program is an 11-month intensive 36 credit hour as a STEM certified program. We have a large international population already in the program. And as Greg has mentioned, we are located in a rural Midwestern college town. Um, the value propositions that we see for our program are one, developing methodological and technological skills, half and half um, to meet the curriculum. We are the only program that has two disciplines creating the curriculum for our program. And those are the MIS programs and the quantitative methods. Uh, we also focus on shaping the thinking. We do that through a lot of ways. And the courses here, what you'll notice is that they're very project-based, team-focused, and focused on applying what you're learning to real business problems. And lastly, experiential learning. So our program uh, boasts many opportunities for students to practice the skills and techniques that they're learning in the classroom. That's done through both an industry practicum, working through the Krenicki Center, which is a, a conceptual space where multi-billion dollar companies hire us to complete their analytics work and students have the opportunity to be hired and paid as consultants on those projects. Um, for summer 2022 classes, um, the students coming in, you guys would be taking um, to start out with, you would be with one of the founders of the program and truly one of the most brilliant mathematical minds in the world with um, Mohit Tawarlamani and he teaches our business analytics class, so clearly a foundational course. Um, in the second term, which is our third term, of summer, students take IT innovation and advantage. This is one of the MIS courses with another founding faculty member of the pro program, Karthik Kanan. And then Yan Wang, who are, is our co-academic director, he would have the opportunity, not the requirement, to take the Python programming class. We didn't initially include that course as part of the NIMS curriculum, but many of the former students um, wanted to take it. Um, felt that they were covering some different concepts because I know you guys cover that before you arrive, but that, that would be available for you. In fall, uh, you take two of your core classes, the first being the data mining, which is a machine learning course. And then you'll also be taking your uh, advanced SQL course. In the IT innovation class, you will be introduced to basic SQL. The management of organizational, organizational data is the advanced SQL course. You'll be offered many electives. Uh, just a few of them would be the using R for analytics, which is taught by um, academic director Matthew Lanham, computing for analytics, which, which this is a very high level uh, technical course. We don't recommend it for all of our students, but those who are interested in pursuing careers in data science, um, this is a great for, course for them and it uses a very high level of Python. You would also have opportunity to take a data visualization class. The primary focus will be on Tableau. And then also we have started a new class. Matthew Lanham will be teaching a cloud computing course. Um, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this cloud computing course will be in two parts. The first part will be one credit hour. And you will be able to earn and, and perform functions that will lead to an AWS certification. Um, and fall module two, which is your last module in the program, you would take the advanced business analytics course and the electives that would be available for next year. And the second module will be web data analytics, also extremely popular class where you will learn the technique of web crawling big data course. Um, they they do some, they focus mostly on Google Cloud in that class. I believe we have requested they add um, containers and things. So Docker's and Kubernetes also be incorporated 
into some of the technical focus of that class, analyzing unstructured data, and then again, the part two of the cloud computing course. Um, this is kind of a spread to just give you a demonstration of many of the poster and co-curricular opportunities. So our students use work that they do in the classroom uh, and in their industry practicum, which is a, a uh, project that they do with a real business partner and Professor Lanham and Professor Wong work really hard to scope out these projects and get ones that the companies really care about so that they have skin in the game when they're performing um, the work with the students. Students then present the results for all the deliverables and, and present that to the client. They then use the results of that to put into a poster and enter for now national competitions. We just got back last month from the INFORMS conference where our students took first and third place in that. We're always very excited about that because um, I don't think MIT, which is the top ranked program, according to QS rankings in the US, um, they have never beat us and we're pretty proud of that. So we can move on. Um, we did something unprecedented two years ago during the pandemic, and that was uh, Professor Lanham worked with all of the groups from their industry practicum and took the results and co-authored a paper with each group for publication. They were all submitted and every one of those papers was published. So many of the students were invited to present their work on national platforms. This was just another way that we helped highlight the um, innovative and challenging work that our students are doing here. These are things that students can put on resumes, which can be very attractive to uh, potential employers. Um, <clears throat> these are some of the uh, industry credentials that we work with here. So we're always providing opportunities to learn and grow your professional career outside of the classroom. We do several trainings a year with SAS. We've done three different trainings with them, and we offer the certified test at the end of that. Students get to take these trainings for free. They would normally cost several hundred dollars to complete online. The current NIM students that are here, as soon as they got here, we did a linear regression modeling training, which leads to their business analyst certification. Many of the students participated. I know one student in particular, um, Ishan, did take and pass that certification exam. So. Uh, you do have some former students uh, and those who are currently here who have taken advantage of that opportunity. We've also worked with um, SAS on doing the base programmer certification and right now we're working on scheduling in January an optimization training with them and we're going to incorporate a challenge with that as well. Um, as I mentioned, there are company sponsored projects through the Kroniki Center. Our students have not only participated in case conferences here on campus, which I'd like to mention, um, the BAME program cleaned house hit the last one. I think we took first, second, third, and many other um, honorable mention placements in the Kroniki Stamina Case Competition, or not Kroniki, but the Stamina Case Competition. But students have also participated in case competitions outside of the university. Two years ago, the state of Indiana rolled out a data analytics challenge to address two health impairments that are particularly high in the state of Indiana. They accepted both professional and collegiate submissions, and two of our groups were accepted as one as three finalists from the collegiate level to present their work at the state level. So many opportunities to get involved and express your skills and get some recognition outside of the classroom. We've also had Google here. Kroniki brought them in two years ago for a workshop and hackathon. We've had NVIDIA here for a deep learning training. So we're always looking for opportunities to enrich what you're learning inside of the classroom and some optional learning opportunities outside of the classroom. <clears throat> and here's the picture of our winning teams for second and third again in the fall stamina case competition. So very, very proud of our uh, students' achievement. I don't think we've ever got first, second, and third in this competition. So they've done, they did a really great job this year. Uh, lastly, what is there to do at Purdue? That's the wrong question. What isn't there to do at Purdue? First of all, Purdue University has over a thousand student groups and organizations that are all there for you to be a part of. If you have an interest, I'm pretty sure we have a club for it. Um, 
whether you like bowling, badminton, soccer, there are extracurricular opportunities here that you can get involved with. We have a full co-recreation center that your tuition and fees pay for. You can take classes, everything from fencing to swimming to rock climbing. So lots of opportunities to stay active. Cranard itself has student-led organizations, both a general student government association and also individual clubs that you can join and be a part of. Um, so some of the other things that we do here, we I, I had a great question I'd never been asked this week during an interview. A student asked me, said, well, what are some of the what are some of the lesser known secrets, Eric Craner? <laughs> and I love the question. I said, well, I think one thing students don't know till they get here is we always have food. Um, at least twice a week, we're feeding you um, and some kind of social. So there's opportunities for you to mix and mingle, not with it, just with the full-time. We have a large portfolio of master's programs here at Craner that we're very proud of. So you'll have an opportunity to, to grow your network and and meet some of the global supply chain students, the marketing, the finance. It's just a very vibrant ecosystem to be a part of. And I, I would advise all students before you get here to really hone in on and think about what you want to get out of the program because we'll throw everything at you. You just need to have some clarity on what it is you're looking for and we'll help you find it once you're here. Um, beyond the weekly socials, there are networking events, professional development opportunities, arts and convocation, music events, local sporting events, professional sporting events. We took all the students to a Purdue football game. You can see a picture there of our current coach, Coach Brom. We have a winning season right now. We just have one more game waiting to see what bowl game we can go to. But even more exciting than that right now, the Purdue basketball team is ranked third in the nation. And you have not seen basketball until you go to a game at Mackey Arena. There is nothing like it. It's known to be one of the loudest and most vibrant uh, basketball arenas in the state. And I just talked to a student last night before I left about um, their need to get a basketball ticket soon uh, before they're all gone and experience that while they're here at Purdue. So many opportunities here. We, uh, we love to, to, grow, to grow your professional development, to grow your experience while you're here with us. And it's just a very exciting place to learn and um, prepare for your career. Uh, there are some pictures of some of the events that we've done, and I would say our motto and theme is work hard, play hard. And um, we're not joking about the work hard. We don't mess around in our program. We don't apologize for the fact that we're an extremely rigorous program. But on the other side, we play hard. So when the work's done, uh, we put the books away, we, we get outside, we get together, and we enjoy, um, enjoy each other, enjoy, and take advantage of the opportunities that are here at Purdue University. So uh, the only thing left to say is that you could be here. Here's our group tailgating before one of the Purdue home football games. Um, as you can see, there's, there's no uh, lack of fun to be had in this program as well as a uh, lack of opportunity. So thank you very much for your time today. Uh, thank you, Mary. And while we wait for uh, Binesh to come up with the next segment of the presentation, what you must have observed is uh, between NMIMS and Purdue, the partnership has been built in a way where it's not just academic focus. It is a lot of extracurricular activities and all the opportunities that you get. And of course, there were lots of questions. And in, in the next 10 minutes, I'm absolutely sure that most of your questions will be answered. Oh, I forgot, the next set of slides are for me and thereafter Professor Binesh will come on. So I could see a few questions on the selection process. Yes, you are applying to a leading analytics program. And whenever it's a leading program, admissions will always be competitive. That's a given. If admissions are not competitive, then probably there is, uh, you know, it, it's to do with the nature of the program. So yes, admissions are competitive. So what does the process involve? The two universities, and you have to meet the requirements of both universities in order to get admitted into the program. So the program admission process has two parts to it. The first part starts with NMIMS. So what is the eligibility criteria to apply? So first of all, you have to have a bachelor's program and you have to have a minimum 55%. You should have had mathematics uh, at grade 11th 
and 12th. Uh, you should have a math stats or economics at your undergraduate level. In addition to that, you will have to have taken one of these uh, national or international tests. So either the NMAT by GMAC, or you also have the option if you do not want to do the NMAT by GMAC, you can submit your GMAT score. You need a minimum of 650 to apply or a GRE. So far, we've not had any GRE applicants, but Purdue is open to accepting GRE applicants, which are 319 and above. So that's your eligibility criteria. If you have all of this, then you are uh, you know, ready to be considered. So once this screening criteria I've met, you've applied, you've taken the NMAT by GMAC or you've taken the GMAT GRE, uh, the shortlisted candidates will then be invited for a case discussion and personal interview. I can see a question, what is the NMAT score? That cutoff varies from year to year and therefore it's hard for me to tell you what is going to be the cutoff for, for this year. Uh, but we can definitely tell you what the GMAT and the GRE uh, cutoff is but the cutoffs are, are pretty high. So the selected candidates will then be uh, invited for a case discussion and personal interview. And the selected candidates will then get a conditional admission uh, at NMIMS for the MBA DSA program. So this is a conditional offer because you still have to undergo the Purdue process. All of this would be completed by end of February. So end of February, once you've cleared our admission process, now you can start applying to Purdue. Now the Purdue's admission process is no different from what it is for the students who will do the entire one-year program, all the 36 credits. So here you will have to complete the application process and all the details on the Purdue side, it's not any different. You'll have to submit your statement of purpose, your letter of recommendation. You also have to do your TOEFL or your IELTS, your language proficiency test. Ideally, it's recommended that you take your TOEFL or your IELTS in IELTS in the month of January itself, and therefore there's no delay as far as your admission is concerned. You'll also be required to submit your video essay. Now, once you've submitted all of this to Purdue, Purdue will go through all of this, and thereafter, selected candidates will undergo an interview. And thereafter, either you'll be accepted or rejected. So what you will see at the end of the process, it's very competitive. And yes, students have been rejected. So it's not a guarantee that once you're selected by NMIMS SPM, you will be selected by Purdue. The chances are very high, but there is no, in, in last year, we had a few candidates who got rejected by Purdue. They did not meet the Purdue requirements. But in such a case, the option is if you have an offer at NMIMS from any of the MBA programs, you can join any of the other MBA programs. Of course, if you have an offer for admission from the other MBA program. So this is the selection process. It's a two-stage process and you have to complete the requirements of both universities. Next slide, please. Uh, and the important thing for you to remember is that uh, the NMAT, GMAT, NMAT by GMAT exam, those of you are planning to apply through the NMAT by GMAT, you need to apply to NMIMS SPM before you take the exam. You can note all these details and more details are available on these links. Okay. Uh, the cohort, uh, the, the maximum number of students that we will take are 40 students for this particular program. Next slide, please. Uh, over to Professor Binesh now to take you through the internships. And once he goes through the internships and placements, we come to the program fees. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mina, for that. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think the, the, the next two slides will be something which I believe most of you would be anticipating. Uh, so one is uh, obviously, uh, as I mentioned, there's a 12 week compulsory internship, which is, which is, which is part of this program. Uh, it generally happens once the students are back from Purdue. Right uh, now, uh, the founding batch had a, a, a bit of a uh, you know uh, uh, had a difficult system out there because you know we had the pandemic, uh, so which actually had issues with the calendar, uh, etc. Uh, so arranging an internship had been a challenge. But in, despite all of those challenges, uh, one thing which uh, I think we as a um, as driving this program uh, as BMA can be proud of is that we had hundred percent. Uh, internship. Uh, so all of our students got placed in some of the leading uh, company brands, as you can uh, you know see here. 
And uh, the experience had been uh, very good, uh, both for the candidate and for the organization as well. So few of these organization ended up uh, you know, uh, uh, giving PPOs uh, to the students. So overall, uh, it has been a very good uh, placement season for the founding batch. Uh, now, as far as the final placement is concerned, uh, now the the thing which I really want you to focus is you know the kind of roles that uh, the the graduates of this uh, course have got into. And as I mentioned, the first slide. Uh, uh, you know, as you may recollect, uh, is that the idea is to uh, you know, have uh, graduates which basically can be at the intersection of business and analytics. And you can see the positions out there, right? So uh, senior manager analytics, manager analytics, senior business analyst, product manager. So uh, you know, most of these uh, roles require, uh, you know, uh, them to deliver both on business and analytics and thereby acting as a bridge effectively with, with business users and the data team. Uh, and I think uh, that really is something uh, which uh, the industry could also understand. And we have been having some good feedback even from the organization that they're doing really uh, good. Uh, so these are the kind of typical roles one might uh, uh, you know, anticipate as part uh, you know, once, once you complete this program. So it's typically techno-functional. As far as the package details are concerned now, you need to bear in mind that these packages are typically given to people who have no experience in analytics or, or no relevant experience per se, right? So the highest package that we have been able to uh, get for the graduate is around 19 plus lakhs. This over 19 lakhs to be precise. And the median has been around 15. And the least that we have got is around 13.5. And you need to understand that this need not be a, a you know kind of figures written on stone uh, uh, and this may not be benchmarked because the reason is, as I mentioned, the market itself was going through a very tough time. There were uh, kind of uh, uh, cash flow issues, uh, even the market organizations were, uh, not all organizations were hiring. Uh, obviously the budget had completely, uh, you know, uh, it was not there enough for any new hiring. So despite all of these challenges, uh, I'm happy. And despite the fact that the typical class, the few people who come with experience, but a good number of them uh, are typically uh, coming with no relevant experience or pressure. So, uh, you know, in totality, I would say that uh, it, it, it definitely is an achievement from a placement perspective. And these are some of the big brands uh, that, and this is again, not an exhaustive list to be honest. Uh, uh, this is all I could fit in. Uh, so you have uh, many of the leading companies that, ha that actually have uh, uh, been partnered with us for the hiring. And you have some of the big brands out there, like the Citigroup, ICICI Bank, uh, Accenture, Unilever, and so on and so forth. One of the big takeaway from the slide is that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, I mean, we are not actually churning graduates to work in boutique analytics companies. There are obviously firms like Tiger Analytics at the end of the day. But more importantly, you can see that they are actually coming from diverse domains. So one of the things that we equip graduates is also to be able to work in multiple uh, industry verticals or across functions, right? <clears throat> so we have people working, uh, you know, in the HR space. We have people working in uh, operations. We have people working, uh, you know, in in supply chain, uh, right? Uh, and we, we have people working in bank, and then we even have people working in insurance. So it's across diverse industries, in fact. And obviously, we have people working in consulting companies like, uh, you know, Cognizant. Uh, so uh, it's exciting out there, uh, and I believe uh, these people should be ahead of the race, right? Because uh, they are actually getting to a point wherein you know many organizations even anticipate that the gap exists, but I believe they're really filling. So what would be exciting to see is what the what these people end up doing in the years to come. I think they're already ahead of the race. So I mean, I think there's a the, I mean these people will get definitely a very good upper trajectory going ahead. So I think that that's a way to look at it, uh, you know, from a, from a much broader perspective. Yeah, uh, Mina, maybe over to you for the piece. And yeah. yeah, yeah, thanks, uh, Professor Binesh. Uh, so uh, yeah, there were questions around the fees. So tuition fees will again have two components. You will have the NMIMS fees for the NMIMS component and you will have the Purdue fees for the Purdue component. So the fees for 2020 was 12 lakhs. Uh, for your stint at uh, NMIMS, and the tuition fees at Purdue is $24,400 odd. Apart from the tuition, obviously, when you join a university, you will also have to bear some uh, boarding and lodging expenses. So uh, in the US, where you're expected to spend about seven months, you'll be spending about 
six and a half to seven and a half thousand dollars. And obviously, this depends on each one's living style. You could also end up spending more. Some of you could even spend a little less. Uh, it's totally up to you. So you have now the fees for Purdue will be required to be paid not when you join NMIMS. The Purdue fees will be paid once you travel to Purdue. So what happens is you complete your, uh, you know, let's say you, you will join the program June of next year and you will travel to Purdue the following year. 23 is when you will travel to Purdue in June. So you'd be expected to pay your fees for Purdue in 23 June, okay? You will come back from Purdue in December 23. Uh, and in January, you will start your internship in India. So obviously what must be obvious to you by now that this program doesn't offer you an opportunity to work in America. These two big universities have come together to build talent for India, to build top class talent for India. So NMIMS, SBM trains you on the managerial aspect, a bit of analytics, and Purdue, which is a leader in analytics, trains you in the analytics. And it is because of the expertise of these two universities that we were able to place the first batch, which got placed this year. They completed, they graduated only this year, uh, and they, 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 they've been placed. So, so that gives you an idea of the fees and living expenses. I've already explained. There was a, there was a question about the visa. Now, so far, not a single student's visa has been rejected. There are only two batches which have gone so far. But this was a question which has been raised every year. And what I learned from Purdue is that uh, their, their visa acceptance rate, they, they've never had a visa reject, or probably they had one in 10,000. So as far as the visa is concerned, so far, we've not had any such issues. All students who applied for the visa, and of course, all the assistance that's provided is the documents that you require to apply for your visa, your I-20 and all of that, will be provided by Purdue. We provide you the required assistance, but visa is something each student has to work on their own. Only the assistance can be provided. I think with that, we com uh, come to the end of our uh, presentation and we can now take up uh, questions which are there in the chat box. So uh, uh, I could, I could, uh, so I, to me, it seems like we've answered most of the questions that are there in the chat box, but let's just run through the questions, Abhinesh, one more time and see yeah. if there are some questions yeah, we'd like to answer. Uh, so, there was one question which related to the GMAT and GRE applicants. When What is the deadline for them? So the GMAT and GRE takers can apply up to third week of January. Those dates are again available. Re request to visit the website. So there is a lot more time available for the GMAT and GRE takers. So the third week of uh, January is when you need to apply. I think, uh, Mina, so another uh, common question, I think, that are popping up, uh, you know, uh, at least a couple of times is, you know, uh, can... can uh, become graduate supply or people from uh, you know uh, from finance yeah. background so i think i think uh, the answer for that i think as uh, mina covered as part of uh, you know the eligibility criteria the only eligibility that we have uh, is that uh, you know max uh, statistics or econometrics or these kind of con subjects you should have had as part of your 11th uh, and 12th or maybe your undergrad as well uh, now if you have done that i think then uh, uh, what's your major does not completely matter uh, yeah, and I think there was another one question on work experience. So yes, we do prefer candidates uh, with some amount of relevant work, work experience. That is, when I say relevant, it has to do with uh, data analysis, necessarily not advanced analytics, but uh, some kind of data uh, analysis if you're in that kind of a role. I think that gives you an edge, but that's not an eligibility criteria. Yeah. Yeah. What I'd also like to add, when we say work experience, you will see the difference that comes is uh, in the compensation packages. So generally, when we talk about the higher compensation packages, generally they go to students with uh, with uh, with work experience. So when you saw that you know there were these salary packages which are twenty lakh plus, they generally go to people with higher work experience. With zero experience, of course, you have to be exceptionally exceptionally good to be able to compete with people with work experience. We do give preference, and so does Purdue give preference to people with work experience. But that doesn't mean that we don't have people without work experience. We've had freshers, and several of these freshers have done extremely well. In fact, uh, we've had a couple of our freshers who've gone to Purdue and actually maxed the class, uh, you know, at Purdue. You know, amongst the NMIMS students, they've done extremely well. So, so it's not that they don't do well, but uh, there is a preference for people with uh, people with work experience. Uh, I think uh, there's a question in terms of what kind of profile is Purdue looking at. 
So maybe uh, Mary or Greg, you know, you may want to answer something like, what are you looking for in a candidate when you are selecting students? Sure. Um, generally speaking, we look for, we take a holistic approach to reviewing the applicants. So primarily we want to make sure the student will be successful in the classroom. We want to make sure that uh, thinking about all of the admitted students and the fact that everything is graded on a curve, a, a very strict curve in Craner, we want to make sure that all the students we admit uh, will be able to keep up with the other population of the school. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, we're looking for well-roundedness um, since, in, in my opinion, the locus of learning happens largely outside of the classroom. We would like to have a well-rounded student body. Um, the richer the learning uh, environment among the students, the more that they're going to learn. And so we're looking for those who bring something uh, valuable to the classroom and to the learning cohort. So in a nutshell, besides having scores, and you can see our averages on the website, we're looking for those interesting factors that enhance the learning population, um, enhance the diversity, and learning opportunities for all the students in the program. Uh, thanks, Mary. Uh, there's a question here. Are there any scholarships that can be provided to students? Uh, let me answer that for you. Uh, you're getting the MS BAME degree by paying half the tuition, in fact, less than half the tuition. Uh, and, and, and that's a huge plus. You're getting the same degree that people get by completing the whole year at Purdue. So that is because you do 18 credits at Purdue and 18 credits get transferred from NMIMS and that's how you get your MS BAME degree. So it's 18 from NMIMS and 18 credits from Purdue. So the scholarship is already built into this program. It's already built for each and every student. There's no special scholarship for it. So it's kind of a package. So in that respect, I can say this is very, very good value for money. And I can see Greg nodding his head and completely agreeing with me that this is absolutely good value for money because you're spending about six to seven months and getting your MS paying degree from Purdue. More than anything else, it is very unique. And I think Greg talked about it last time, was your opportunity to be a part of the alumni group of two universities. So NMIMS and Purdue. So once you graduate from Purdue, you become part of the alumni group, part of the huge network. This is a world of networking. And which program provides you an access to the alumni of two leading universities right when you graduate? The other aspect and a very important aspect is I don't think there are schools in India which give you this kind of diversity in the class. We give you a lot of diversity in terms of students from across India. But here, because you go and spend about seven months in the US, this is not a program run for just the NMIMS cohort. You are part of the regular MS BAME program students, the, the 150 plus students that they have. So look at the intercultural exposure, the learning that comes from, from the diversity. Uh, you know, Greg talked about the you know, students coming from multiple countries in their program. So those are huge pluses, which are very hard to replicate in a single country. It's only because these two universities have come together, they have packaged this program together. And, and of course, admissions are going to be extremely competitive. There is no doubt about it. As far as visa is concerned, I don't think you need to worry about it because you joined a solid program. Visa should not be a problem. It has not been a problem so far. Any other questions you want to take? Uh, yeah, so I mean, no, I mean, one thing I would add to, to, to your statement um, that maybe the uh, prospective students don't know, this is the only agreement that we have for the BAME program. Uh, we have a lot of students that come in to Purdue that already have their MBAs and would have to do the full program at a cost of 2x of what this offering is. So it is a, it's a very unique opportunity only offered through NIMS and Purdue. Absolutely. Uh, and it's an honor that, you know, you know, that Purdue and NMIMS have partnered. We don't take this partnership lightly. I think both universities value the relationship and we're absolutely committed to it. So, so it's hard to have these kind of dual degree programs and therefore you don't see because there's required a lot of trust and so on. So, so I think we've more or less taken all the questions. Binesh, you want to add anything else? You know, if I could, you Mina, know, one other thing, just to just to sure. quantify another statement that you made, our alumni network is now greater than six hundred thousand worldwide. 
um, to have that reach is also something very unique to Purdue. Wonderful, wonderful. That's absolutely excellent. And all our students have benefited out of the network. The first batch, which has graduated, is already talking about you know, the wonderful opportunities that they got as a result of being part of that, uh, of the NMIMS and the Purdue network. So, so, so it's a huge network, yes. Uh, Vinesh, you wanna add anything else? I think there's only one question, I believe, as the work experience part. Yes, I mean, like, it's, it's not an eligibility criteria, I believe. I think there's something which I mentioned. So there's no minimum work experience kind of, but we definitely, I mean, you will get an edge if you have relevant work experience is what I can say. And I think, Mira, there's one, one last question possibly we can take and that may be relevant for the rest also. I think there's a question on, is there any, uh, you know, loan, uh, uh, you know, facility or the sure. loan support that is available? Sure. If you want sure. to answer that, yeah. Absolutely, funding is available, and most of our students have availed of bank loans. That's really not a problem. So, uh, bank loans are available for funding your fees for Purdue. Indian banks provide that loan. They also provide loans for funding your fees of NMIMS, uh, SPM. So, yes, bank funding is available. It's already been availed. So, it's a process which is already in place. It's you know we now uh, you know you would be the fourth batch which should be joining the program. So, all this has been tried and tested. So, funding is available. Is there anything else? Uh, I think, uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, and, and please note, you don't need to do a GMAT and an NMAT by GMAT, either of the two. So either it's an NMAT by GMAT or a GRE. One of the two is mandatory uh, requirement for applying for this particular program. For the NMAT by GMAT, you know that you'll have to apply uh, before you, uh, you know, register for your, uh, you know, before you take your exam. And for GMAT, uh, you can uh, GMAT and GRE takers can apply up to the third uh, third week of January. Okay, I think with that we can end the uh, presentation today. Uh, so thank you very much for a very patient listening, uh, and thanks for your wonderful question. It only shows how interested you are in the program, and I'm sure our colleagues from Purdue enjoyed taking those questions. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. Thank you, uh, Greg. Uh, thank you very much, and. Many thanks to uh, Professor Benesha, the program chairperson at NMIMS. So wishing you all the best with your application process and look forward to meeting you at NMIMS. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. pleasure here. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.